Hey guys, Janice Vaughn, letting your light shine. Thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate so much all of your likes, your comments, subscribes, Facebook posts, Facebook messages, friend requests. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. All right, so I've got a list of some of the things that are signs of covert narcissism, which is probably the most common form of narcissistic abuse. So I'm gonna go through some of these with you. I probably won't get through all of them. And again, excuse my voice, I'm just getting over this crud, who knows? Um, anyway, so difficulty in developing and maintaining relationships. So the narcissist that you're involved with, does he or she have a habit of not having good, solid relationships? Probably, okay, why? Most people can pick up on their bullshit right away and they will, they will, they will push these people and, you know, call them out right away and not continue a relationship with them. That is why these people bounce from relationship to relationship to relationship because they need to manipulate the next person. Okay. People like myself and empath and people that are really, um, well, so many people are kind, loving and caring. You don't have to be an empath to be that, but I personally am an empath, so I try to see the good in people. And so people like that, I don't know why they're drawn to me, probably because they can't be like me, all right? I get that now, I didn't get that before. But they will try to manipulate their way into any situation, okay? So most people will pick up on the red flags right away. And that's why the relationships continue and they go on and on and on. Um, since the narcissist has been out of my life, I know that he has preyed upon 15, 20, maybe 25 different women. Um, thank goodness they've all come across the red flags immediately and realized that, um, yeah, this guy's a fraud. He's a freaking con man and uh, hmm, we ain't putting up with it. Good for you guys. Seriously, kudos to you and a lot of you I've talked to. You know that we've, we've <laughs> become friends even, a lot of us. Um, so they can't have a relationship. They can't have solid relationships. They think they have solid relationships, but they truly don't. The people put up with them only because of a loved one or what have you. All right. So pay attention to how many close friends these people have and how many people have their back. Probably not that, not that many people at all. All right. So that's huge. Um, and then look at your own life and go, wow, I've got a lot of really good people in my corner that have never left my side. All right, that's, that's huge, okay? Um, <clears throat> they have depression or anxiety. Usually people that are um, covert narcissists have had some sort of trauma in their childhood. They were abused, whether it's mentally, physically, verbally, sexually, whatever. And they just honestly don't deal with their trauma. They don't go to therapy, why? Because, because narcissists don't have a problem. Okay, so they're never going to admit to it. So therefore, they're never going to seek the help professionally or otherwise to make themselves or get themselves in a better place. Most people will sit there and say, you know what? I've got some issues I got to deal with. So I want to get the help that I need and I want to go through therapy and I want to learn how to become a better person. A narcissist won't do that, um, which brings up another point that I it just it just hit me when I said that. So I, I, I'm a self-help junkie. I'm just gonna admit it, I'm a self-help junkie. I have books upon books upon books upon books about how to become a better person, how to be better than I was before, um, <clears throat> how to be you know, a better friend, how to be a better wife, how to be a better um, business owner, all those things. Because you know what? I've always grown up thinking, what can I do today to be better than I was yesterday? And he used to poo-poo my books. I mean, I had bookshelves like loaded with stuff. And he would be like, why are all these self-help books? Maybe you need to read some of your self-help books. And I'm thinking, dude, if you knew how much I've grown over the last 12 to 15 years, you would have no idea. You would have no idea. Um, so they don't want to get help. They don't want to seek out resources. They don't want to reach out to people. They don't want to read books to become better people. They just won't do it. Um, so I never took offense to that because those self-help books that I have and I have read over the years and sometimes many of those I've read three and four times. Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. Read that book, guys. It's the best. It's the best. And I think I've read that book 10 times and I will read it 
over and over again. Um, I even encouraged him at one point to sit down with him and like read it with him. No, gosh, no, no, no. I'm not reading that shit, he would say. And I'm like, okay, I'll read it. <clears throat> so I always tried to, um, well, I still do to this day, become better than I was the day before, but a narcissist will never do that. They're going to place blame on you and figure out why um, you need those self-help books because why you have the problem, they don't. So it actually kind of backfired on me, but really in, in essence, it did not. I knew, I knew exactly what, um, <laughs> what I was reading. Dude, don't tell me I'm not going to become a better person. Um, excuse the noise in the background. I got my contractor here. I'm remodeling my back room. Um, anyway, so, um, they are envious and jealous of other people. And that is a fact. Okay. My, um, my daughter, you guys have heard me talk about her, my children, my son, um, the narcissist was always, 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 and still is to this day, even though he's not in my life, jealous of my daughter. He just couldn't fathom the relationship that I have with my children because he didn't have a relationship with his own children. So he, he tried to destroy the relationship that I have with my kids. And I was not ever, 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 ever going to have that. I just was not going to have that. There's no way in hell. Um, did he try to attempt to destroy relationships? He did. He did. And for a while there, he was, um, he was, I don't want to say winning, but he was becoming a little bit successful in those areas because he would isolate me so much that I just didn't want to talk to any of my family. And, um, looking back now, that's horrible. It's awful. And thank goodness I've reconcile with so many of my family members. In fact, there's nobody that I don't talk to at this point in my life. And, um, a lot of it was obviously my own fault because I allowed him to have that much control over me, but nobody in this world will ever have that again, ever, ever. So if you're not being allowed to talk to your friends and family, or if you're, you're making a phone call to your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, whoever, and the narcissist is saying, well, why are you calling them? You know what? Ignore them, gray rock them, totally gray rock the hell out of them and just have your conversation. Okay. Um, thank goodness I've not lost any friends along the way. In fact, I've gained so many more friends by just being who I am and being transparent. They knew all along. So keep that in mind. All right, you guys don't, don't let the narcissist, um, destroy your relationships. Okay. Um, self-serving empathy. Oh my gosh. All right. They pretend that they are so empathetic and they pretend that they have the biggest heart in the world. Well, they feel they do when they go out and they do something for you, okay? The narcissist that I had, he would he would habitually, oh, this is even, this is crazy. He would habitually buy me flowers like every week <laughs> with my debit card. So he knew I love flowers. I love flowers. I love flowers, they're beautiful. Um, but he would buy them every time he would go to the grocery store and pick up a grocery order, or God forbid, spend two hours on the grocery store, like my last video mentioned. Um, <clears throat> so he would come home with flowers, which I'm grateful for, absolutely. But I'm sitting here going, um, I just paid for my own flowers, man. Okay, cool. I, I would have bought them myself anyway. But it's, it's those little things that they try to do all of these things for you, but it's really for them to get recognition for something you're essentially doing for yourself, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. Um, so he couldn't do that on his own because he didn't have a job. He didn't have a job. He didn't buy that with his own money. He didn't go out and get a side job and make 50 bucks just to, you know, grab me a $5 bouquet at Fry's half price sale or Walmart, whatever. I don't need $50 bouquets of flowers. Not at all. Um, but he would do that. And that would be his way to say, well, look at me. I got you flowers today. And okay whatever. It's just, just some of the, um, <clears throat> some of the examples, um, grandiose fantasies. Oh my goodness. Grandiose fantasies is a huge one. So they have all of these hopes and these dreams and these goals, but they don't act on them. So the narcissist that I was with, he, he has potential. He had potential. Okay. He had, he had all of these things that he wanted to do. He wanted to create you know, his own, um, sporting business and, and all of these different things. And I always encouraged him. I said, Oh my gosh, you know, let's set you up an LLC. Let's get you a nonprofit going. Let's do this. Let's get, let's get this going. Let's do all of these things. And you know what? He would never act on it. 
He would talk about it, but he wouldn't act on it. And I, I always said, I go, you know what? You're just limiting yourself because you're not reaching out to try and do these things to better yourself. And so it's like they talk about it, but they don't want to do the work. And so in my situation, he didn't do any of the work because he wanted to ride my coattails like he did for so many years. My fault, my fault, not his, my fault. I own it. Okay. Um, it's okay. I've released it. I don't, um, I don't, I don't, um, what am I trying to say? I forgive myself for that. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I don't own that crap. I don't. So it doesn't bother me anymore, but you know, he could have been so many different things, but he chose not to. And that's his choice. It's not mine, you know? So he's over here like declining and I'm over here just rising up, doing my thing. And I'm okay with that. All right. Because I have goals and dreams and I fulfill my dreams and goals. And uh, I don't limit myself. Narcissists don't. They just, they don't want to do the work. They just want to have everybody else do the work for them. And then they are going to reap the rewards. And that's really shitty. So don't do that. Let them um, revel in their own shit. So he can sit there and think about all the dreams that I encouraged him to do and all the, all the businesses that I helped him create to um, start that he just never did. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm just over here doing my thing, guys. <laughs> all right. I love you all. Thank you all so much. Okay. Love and light. Um, many blessings always. Thank you.